All right, everyone, well, welcome to another PingCast. I hope you're ready for another bowl of Linux soup. Today I have Brian here. No, not Brian from Laz, not the guy with the Y, the guy with the I. Brian, the developer of Descent OS. And hello. Hello, Brian. And today we're going to talk about uh, Raspberry Pi to be released on Wednesday, Adobe uh, Killing Flash for Linux, Microsoft, Google, and Netflix adding DRM to HTML5 and how that affects you. And then I'm going to ask Brian a few questions about his distro. So tell me, Brian, what do you think of the Raspberry Pi? Are you excited for Wednesday? Oh, yes. Can't afford one yet, but I'll get one soon enough. <laughs> uh, about the most affordable computer you'll ever find. Yeah, that's about. I mean, you know. You could get Wi-Fi, you could get, you know, a good SD card in there, you can make it a media center, you could actually use it as a desktop distribution, but, you know, and some it, somewhere out there, someone's going to buy, like, 60,000 of them and make the biggest main uh, database in the world out of all Raspberry Pis, and that would just be epic. Oh, I, I remember talking to a guy in IRC who said he was going to get 10 of the Model Bs and uh, run a computer cluster with them. I would. That sounds fun. Ah, nothing like Especially since, you know, you could actually get a FreeBSD version of that, and FreeBSD is actually pretty good for servers, so if you want to have a Raspberry Pi dedicated towards a server, FreeBSD might be the way to go with that, but Linux is better. So oh, we'll that talk runs... About uh, last time I read up on BSD, they weren't sure if it worked on the Raspberry Pi. Well, you know, there's the... Um, yeah, and then there's the Raspberry Media Center, the RASPMC, which is what I actually want because I want to plug a Raspberry Pi into the back of my TV and just, you know, use it to watch movies and stuff. So I'd be interested in trying the ARM port for Slackware on it. You and me both, but, you know, good thing about Slackware is that it is customizable enough to be able to just about do anything you want with it if you're, you know, a little bit Linux savvy. So that might be interesting for people who love Slackware like you and me. So, Oh, yeah. So, uh, you did express some interest as you might have in uh, running it as for a multimedia server? Uh, well, you know, I have a uh, spare uh, Samba server here at, in my room, and I was just thinking, you know, if I could just rip movies to that Samba server and then broadcast them over, you know, my network to my Raspberry Pi and just, you know, be able to stream movies off of my server, that would just be awesome. Oh, yeah, so, Pretty awesome. That's honestly what my plan would be because it saves a heck of a lot of room. A and B, it's an HD, and C, it's a Raspberry Pi, and Raspberry Pis are awesome because everyone likes Pi. So. And it fits in, uh, almost fits in Altoids then. Yeah, it almost does. So that is an absolute, just total achievement on what they've done. They have done an amazing job in doing that much into something that little. It's absolutely crazy. Yeah, I applaud them on their work, and I'm glad that uh, they're trying to make affordable computers for people. And I hope this can also uh, help out Linux, since it's a cheap machine that runs Linux. Schools might be interested in that. It might get them... Well, you sure as hell are not going to find any freaking uh, Windows uh, Raspberry Pis out there, that's for sure. <laughs> I don't think it could ever run on it. I don't think it could either, so you know what? Keep Microsoft out of the Raspberry Pi, so we're fine with that. So you want to go to the uh, next story about Adobe and making Flash only available for Chrome? Oh, certainly. Okay, Adobe kills Flash for Linux. The good, the bad, the ugly. Uh, apparently, they're also trying to add DRM to HTML5. I think you and me both are happy to see Flash go, but oh, DRM, yeah, definitely. Really? Well, you you have to kind of expect that to happen. I mean, you know, Chrome was going to be the only platform to technically support Flash. Although Flash is getting uh, security updates for the next five years, Chrome is the only one that is going to use the Pepper API, and it won't be available as a separate download, which means you have to have Chrome to run Flash. And that's just a... Stupid, but B, Flash is going to be dead in five years. 
I mean, but, repositories are still going to be, you know, holding out, you know, Flash 11.2 for the longest time. And they're going to get security updates, so, you know, Flash hasn't really changed since version 9, really, so. Uh, well, what do you think this does to other browsers? Well, for other browsers like Firefox and everything, it re they, I think, are really going to try to bank on, you know, HTML, HTML5 actually catching off. Either with you know WebM or X264, which I would prefer. But um, you know, with all those video codecs and everything, and all those patent wars, and just a lot of codecs just being out there in the wild, it's going to be actually pretty challenging to finally narrow it down into one codec that's going to be free for all. And honestly, some companies don't want that. Some companies want to exert their control over it, so that's why they want to add DRM in the first place. Quite a few. It yeah, quite a few. Love that DR and the broken DR. Oh yeah. System. Well, you know, I'm not. There's some parts where DRM is actually not a bad idea, but when it comes to something like this, I can't say that it's necessarily you know right to be able to be able to limit the limit a free platform like that. It's just honestly, it's a it's a bit uh of a catch twenty two because you know. Yes, you do want the companies who actually made the the uh, content to protect themselves, but you know at what cost to the rest of the community, you know. So that's the endless war that we're stuck in with all of that. So it's going to be very interesting now that Linux has the Linux as a whole has to adjust to not having a new Flash release other than security updates from now on, but. You know, maybe that'll up, open the door for LightSpark or Ganache, which, you know, are far from being what, what you know, Adobe Flash is. But who knows? Maybe in five years it'll catch up, you know? I've heard Ganache is pretty good. It just has issues uh, with embedded videos. Well, you know, it, it's really only designed to work with YouTube, but, you know, as far as I'm concerned, it runs YouTube pretty well, so... Think of what it would be in five years. It could probably be on on par with Flash 11.2, and I'm pretty sure everyone in the Linux community would rather use Ganache if it's you know no patents, nothing. They're just a free version of Flash. That's pretty cool. Uh, how old is Ganache? Well, they've been around since longer than I've been in Linux, so it's I don't even know. But Flash has always been. You know, something that a lot of people have wanted to uh, clone, basically. So, it's been around for a while. I can't get an exact date out of it, but it's been around for years. Are so, there any other uh, Flash uh, alternatives? Well, there's um, LightSpark, which is fairly new. I haven't really looked into LightSpark that much, and there's also SWF deck, but again, I haven't really looked into that much since Ganache is the actual big one because it's the GNU project actually working on it. So, All we right. shall see what happens in five years. Oh, yes, yeah, certainly. Hopefully, Flash will be dead and, you know, HTML5 would be running the web, which honestly looks like it might, ha might happen. I just don't get what Adobe's thinking by doing this. They're kind of destroying a bit of their market base by kind of being a little bit more draconian. It was kind of stupid, really. But we're not Adobe. Adobe has done retarded things in the past, so let's just move on. Oh, don't they all do? <laughs> all right, uh, do you want to talk about uh, the Google privacy policy coming up? Well, as you all know, the Google privacy is coming the new privacy policy is actually going to be coming in on March 1st which is in a few days and basically what they're going to do is take your entire web history and kind of market to uh, to their other parts and market your web history to uh advertisers and everything again more customized you know for advertisers just for you and the problem with that is that means that all those companies that are trying to advertise on the internet get all your information that you do not want them to get in the first place. Uh, and uh, I'm reading an article on digitaljournal.com. It says with just a week to go before Google changes its new privacy policy, 
blah blah blah, users have a last chance to delete their Google browsing history along with any damning information therein. Yes. You might want to, people who uh, have Google accounts might want to start doing that. And once the privacy policy takes effect, all data collected about you, including uh, queries, sites, visits, age, gender, and location, they're signed to your online identity, and you can't opt out without completely abandoning Google. That's about right. It's, uh, it's... Very scary, really, for a lot of people who, uh, you know, their financial information is online. You know, it's honestly kind of unsettling to see, you know, your whole entire internet livelihood in the hands of Google. It's very, uh, I can't really find the word for it. It's very invasive. Invasive, yeah. And, you know, no, a lot of people know about it. No one really want. No one really reads the privacy policies. Well, they don't really. And that's what they think. Where the Google? What's Google going to do with my personal information? Uh, they could do a hell of a lot more than anything. Doing it, you probably don't want anyone else. Yeah, that that's that's a that's a big thing for a lot of people. Is you know, I hope you all have been using incognito mode in Chrome <laughs> because they're going to get all that information too. You're and on the internet. And we'll fork it over to the government. The FBI yeah. will see all the nasty things you do. Oh, well. <laughs> we shall yeah, see about that. Thing. It's just invasive for the, your privacy. I mean, basically, well, it, what we have the Fourth Amendment for privacy. We're supposed to be secure in our uh, papers and property. Yeah. There, there is a lot of ways to get around that, though, and that's basically what they're doing is, you know, People have basically the opt in is now to have a Google account. You know, you're opting in to those regulations. You have to agree to those regulations in order for them to be able to do this stuff. So, you know, technically it's still constitutional because you don't have to get a Google account. They're just making you really making it really hard for you not to. I've well, I've worked in I've done stuff in school before where I've had to sign up for this, that, and the other. I remember having to sign up for uh, Yahoo to do some sort Turned of dot com. Yeah, yeah, project for uh, it was for uh, banking. We were doing some sort of investment project, and we had to uh, sign up for Yahoo and use some software there. So you could be forced to sign up into Google because what are you going to do? Not go to school? Yeah, seriously, it's it's a uh, it's. They they they've gotten the public good on this one, but you know, there are ways to get around it. I mean, you know, you could always browse in private browsing mode if you want. Uh, but. yeah. Um, you could. Uh, I was also. I I use DuckDuckGo. I I like it not just for the fact yes. that they don't track you, but I also like the search engine. I like. I find that I can get my results quicker on it. Uh. It might not be the same for everyone, but I also like the bang syntax. I can search the Arch Wiki, Slack builds, Debian packages, YouTube. I mean, I can just uh, yeah. open up a tab, search YouTube. I don't have to go to any website, just uh, the syntax, YouTube, you know, whatever video, and it's just and, faster. You know, a lot of their coding when it actually comes to the search engine is open source. So that's a cool thing. I mean, it's not all open source because obviously they do have some secret formula, which no one should know. <laughs> I can't really say I blame them on that either. But, you know, they have been fairly friendly to the uh, open source community. I mean, they made that deal with the uh, Linux Mint people to have their engine as the default, you know, search engine in their Firefox browser and Linux Mint 12. So. They have been fairly conducive to the open source community, and they have done it in a way that actually makes them, you know, seem a lot more friendly and a lot more. Uh, a lot more inviting to the open source community than Google ever was, really. But you know, it's DuckDuckGo is starting to take off, so we might see something else coming from DuckDuckGo that is going to let us distance ourselves from Google even more. So, I, I am honestly looking forward to that. Yeah, I really like the search engine. It's a good search engine. 
Yeah, I would like them to be a little bit more than a search engine eventually. Uh, well, so. uh, what else would you like to see? Well, I think, you know, it's been fairly quiet in terms of the actual news, you know, it's... I think that's. I think those are the big things that people really need to look out for. Is just how all these big companies are actually going to play you, play you, and how it's going to affect your a online livelihood and b your operating system in in general. So you should, you know, keep yourself informed. There's a lot of things going around around that you should know. But there's a lot of sites that will go into a lot more than we do. So. Just keep yourself informed. That's the biggest thing because the internet and technology is going through a really crazy phase right now. Oh, yeah. So uh, ways to get around this. Uh, I think – I don't know if the opt-out plugin for Chrome will work anymore You in other websites. It will. Okay. They, uh, they said that it will. They claim it will. Do we have any they, way They of claim knowing? they will. And, and you know, President Obama released that online privacy bill of rights thing, which, you know, is – you know, I'm not going to get too political, but it is actually a pretty decent idea. But you know, it still needs some work, but it's better than nothing. Really. I have, uh, shoot, I, I haven't read this. Uh, I would on, I would like to take a, a look of at that. Uh, but could you just give me a quick uh, fill on in on that? Basically, it makes it so that we have to op be opted in to track. We have our right to privacy. So we just have one right. Well, no, it's a, it's a lot more of that, but that's the gist of it. I remember reading an article where someone was forced to decrypt their laptop so that the evidence could be used against yeah. them in a court case. It just seems like we have absolutely no rights whatsoever with technology. Yeah, not to mention that what's going on with the internet nowadays, where you know people are trying to pass laws that track us for eighteen months because they because if they don't, they think we're pedophiles, which is not the case. So. You know, it's very wrong to do these things when you don't understand the technology that's actually, you know, underlying the whole entire process, you know? It, it's no longer okay to not know what you're doing in Congress. So we'll see, but this is about Linux, so let's talk about Linux. Okay. Uh, you, how is Descent OS coming along? Well, Descent OS 3 is – I actually built myself a little bit of a proof of concept build because I'm going along with, you know, because GNOME 2 is dead, really. GNOME 2 is my favorite desktop environment and um, I, a lot of people's, really. But GNOME 2 is, you know, being left behind in a lot of ways. So my first, you know, problem was trying to find an actual desktop environment to go with that I could use. Well, the answer ended up being two, really. Uh, XFCE is, I think, the probably the most um, – you know that's going to be there for years to come because it's a very stable project. It's a very actively developed project, and it is very similar to GNOME 2. So technically, it's a great idea to bank on. But at the same time, a lot of people who use GNOME 2 want to use GNOME 2. They don't want XFCE. They want GNOME 2. So mate, the fork of GNOME 2 is also a great idea, but you actually don't know how long it's going to last for. And it's so buggy. It's not as buggy as it used to be, really. I, I mean, they it. have done some work. So uh, November, I haven't tried it, so I don't know how stable it is now. It has gotten better. I mean, some of the applets actually work now, so that's impressive. <laughs> but, you know, a lot of it... It's still a fork of GNOME 2. It's still GNOME 2. You can do anything you want with it, really. And May is, you know, decent. And it's a, and you know the upstream mate, <laughs> the upstream mate uh, you actually get from downloading it and compiling it, and everything is just absolutely ugly. But I think that's the beauty of it at the same time because it's just you know as they say on their website, a ugly and intuitive desktop desktop for modern users. So that's exactly what you get with Mate. You know, it's the job of the distro makers and, you know, the theming people to actually make it look pretty. And, you know, if they want to – I hope that they port it to GTK3 like they have talked about. But, you know, we shall see. But as far as, you know, I'm concerned as a distro, distro developer, you know, 
it is a very uh, cool process to go through when you're working with a uh, mate at the same time because it's, you know, it's some, taking something that was huge and having, you know, as just regular people do it, it's not, you know, the known project anymore. It's a few, a few guys. And that's the really cool part of it because they're maintaining it themselves. And it makes you feel a lot more in line with, you know, the fact that they are actually doing it as users and people actually love the desktop. So, oh, right. so it's XFC now. Do you have any interest in moving it to Mate? Uh, no, I'm just going to release two versions at the same time. There's going to be an XFCE version and there's a Mate version. Okay. So uh, everyone's wait. happy. What is your distro based on? It's based off of Ubuntu, um, Descent OS 2.1, the one that has been released, is based off of uh, Ubuntu 11.04. And, it, you know, that's because 11.04 was the last Ubuntu that actually supported Gnome 2 in their repository. So, naturally, I went with that, and I just modernized that, and I added some new packages and everything. So, that is what we're, where we're at right now. That is vanilla Gnome 2. That is 11.04. That is the current version. The next version uh, that's upcoming is version 3, which will, base, which will be based off of 12.04. And that is when we're going to have, you know, the PPA for Mate, and we're also going to have XFCE. So it's, everything's still going to be supported. But, you know, 1204 is a di different beast to really work with because, A, you know, it's finally going to go into beta on the 1st of March. So that's going to make things a lot more easy for me. And, B, it's, you know, very interesting trying to actually keep up with upstream. So that is where I'm at right now. All right, uh, and why why did you make this distro? Well, at first, it was be I you know when I started using Linux, you know I started with Ubuntu and then I went to Fedora, then I went to OpenSUSE, and OpenSUSE SUSE Studio was actually my first uh, taste on you know the base of linux it wasn't exactly making a distro it was just reinstalling packages into you know a base and just spinning out your own version of OpenSUSE. and it was absolutely fascinating to me as a new user because i was actually still fairly new at the time and i thought it was so cool to be able to customize everything to do that and you know as i went on learning linux and i and we had you know gnome 3 came out and then you know, Unity came out, then No 2 died, and, you know, KDE 4.7 came out, and all these other desktops started, you know, changing. The whole entire paradigm of what, you know, I was used to was changing. Honestly, I didn't like a lot of what was going on, so I wanted to have something, because I knew a lot of people felt, you know, the, the same way I did. They didn't like... GNOME 3, they didn't like Unity, they weren't too happy with KDE 4.8, because maybe their, you know, hardware wasn't robust enough, and so they wanted something they've, that they've been used to, so I thought, you know, I, I honestly want to keep GNOME 2 in a Ubuntu distro, so I went in there and I said, okay, what can I make GNOME 2 to look like to make it, you know, behave like, you know, one of those modern desktops, but keep its functionality, you know? And, you know, so I found a lot of ways to do that, and I kind of made it so where I was trying to prove that you don't have to make, you don't have to reinvent the wheel. You could do these things with the, with the same base as, you know, you could do a lot of the new things by just revamping what you already do, by modernizing what you've already done, not having to go and rewrite the whole entire thing, not having to go and make a shell. You don't have to do that. You just have to, you know, be a little bit more imaginative for what you have and work with what you have instead of having to go and make something completely new just because you can. All so right. that was it. That was the mission of my distro is to kind of modernize GNOME 2 and actually, you know, make it to where people who like the new interface could use it, but people who also, you know, still love the old interface dearly could use it just fine. And I found that a lot of new users um, don't really like Unity and don't really like GNOME 3 because it's just so different from what they're used to. So, you know, 
if I could target some of the new users who have a little bit of that, you know, interface, but have, you know, the familiarity with something else, then that's great. So, it's so I, I was trying to make this real for everyone. I wasn't trying okay. to uh, make something new. I was just trying to modernize what was already there. So that everybody has their interface. Yeah. Okay. Well, what kind of hardware is this for? What can this run on? Is there, or is there a specific hardware target? Well, I I built it on a seven year old compact, so it, it's it's pretty lightweight. Um, I mean, I was idling at around 168 megabytes of memory in, on a uh, version 2.1, and you know it was very. Um, it's it's pretty. I mean, you can run it on lightning fast hardware. You can run it on slow hardware. I mean, it's 32-bit at the moment, but I will be releasing a 64-bit version for the for the three series. But it's, you know, if you have a seven-year-old computer with 512 megabytes of RAM, you can run Descent OS very fast. It is a it is you know very lightweight and it's very configurable and it's you know it's modern. You don't have to. It doesn't take up a lot of resources, but you get a lot of the same cool things. Okay, uh, would you recommend this to uh, beginners? Yes. I, I, I can only say that because my mom uses it. <laughs> well, let's take it as a good sign that it's good for beginners. So, uh, what kind of applications uh, can we expect to find by default in the OS, and why, would you, why have you selected those applications? Well, version 2.1 has uh, Chromium as a main web browser, and there was actually not really that much of a reason to do that, other than I liked Chromium at the time, so I said, hey, it's a web browser, people are going to change it anyways, or people are going to like it, so I, it's just a web browser. I have LibreOffice in there because, you know, I wanted it to be functional. People don't always know how to install stuff when they're new to Linux, so... And the more that's already there out of the box, the better. I have Excel as a main media player because a I did like Excel a lot, not as much as I used to, but at the, also at the same time I thought it was a it was very um, it was a friendly interface and it played uh, it played music very well and exported and imported music very 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 uh, fast and with different formats. So that was something that I took in consideration. In consideration, and it was lightweight, so all of those made me think that it was a great choice for it. But now I'm leaning, leaning towards Clementine in version three, so I wouldn't expect Excel in version three. I like Clementine. And, yeah, I, I love Clementine. Um, you know, you have a standard email client. I have Clausmail, which which is my preferred email client. You have Quiver for your social networking. Um, you also have Synaptic Package Manager because I didn't put the Ubuntu uh, Software Center in there because I don't like it. Synaptic's pretty good for uh, you know control purposes. It doesn't have the whole software reviews, but it's... It doesn't have the prettiness, but it has way more functionality. Yeah, it's pretty so, functional. I mean, I, am, I was really looking for more functionality than it was, you know, eye candy when it came to uh, Synaptic and the whole entire underlying part of the system. And, you know, there's a lot of other, you know, cool applications in there. I mean, it's nothing that reinvents anything, but it's what you want and just what you want. You know, it's what you need. And, you know, what ev when average person uses on a daily basis, it's there. And it makes it very easy to install your, you know, video drivers and everything. It's based on Ubuntu. Ubuntu has a great repository, has a decent package management system, and, you know, it's fairly easy to use. It's a very intuitive OS to use. So, you know, there's nothing too crazy about it. All right, well, that that was, uh, that sounds pretty good, Brian. It's great having you. Uh, you can check out my review on Descent OS. I think Sneaky, Sneaky Links grabbed an older version of Descent OS and yes, he did. viewed that. Yeah, I'd also like to point out I had a theming issue when I did that review in VirtualBox, but I'm the only one who had that, so I'm gonna have to like yeah. retract that as a flaw. It wasn't that was my specific. Yeah, I, I I I think you broke it. And I just don't think you knew that you did. <laughs> <laughs> I just 
installed it. Yeah, yeah well, uh, I you're the only I person that has that <coughs> problem. I, I didn't bother with guest editions, though, so I don't know. Maybe that was the issue. And maybe that was it. But yes, yeah, go- download it, give it a go. It's on Distro Watch now. You've had 2,000 downloads already? Uh, yeah, just about. Um, You could download it at www.descentos.org. Uh, I will leave and, a link in the show notes for you guys. And, um, you know, give it a try. It's, you know, I have worked very hard on it, and I'm planning on, you know, keeping it as a project for a very long time. This is what I love to do. So if you all would give it a shot, that that would be great. And tell me what you all think about it because, you know, it's very hard to do it without a community. I, I want to know what you all think. I want to know what you all want and what you all want in the next version because I'm working on it. So, you know, now's the time to leave your input. All right. Yeah. You know, I, have a, I have a blog on my website that you all can read. I have a IRC chat room at um, irc.geekshed.net, channel uh, Descent OS, one word. Uh, does I mean, that have I'm. In it? What? No, it does not have the pipe in it. It does not have a pipe in it. The pipe is to look pretty and to <laughs> kind of look different. What's the up? pipe is cool, but yeah. when it comes to actually putting in channels in IRC, it's probably not a good idea. Yeah. You don't know what that pipe is going to do. <laughs> so. All right, well, it was a delight having you here, Brian. Uh, give his OS a try. Drop a comment in uh, the channel. Let us know what you think. Let us know what you think about the other topics. I hope you guys got your fill, and I will see you guys on Saturday to have uh, another bowl of Linux soup with the Linux A-Team. So stay tuned for that. Yeah, stay tuned for that. That'll be cool.